Hi, you're live. Hi. Hi, you got a question? Hey, welcome. Um, yes, um, my question is, what are the components of blame and how does it relate to shame? And my husband, well, I'm aware that I have sort of, there's a layer of shame in my blaming behavior. Uh-huh. Uh, my husband says I use it. Um, I, I blame him quite a lot for things. Yep. Okay. Um, Mark, do you want me to take a jab? Take, take a first crack. Thanks, Annie. Great. Yeah, great. Okay, great. Thanks for your question. So the, you're asking the relationship between blame and shame. Okay. Yeah, the components of blame. How, like, I'm aware of sure. it, but I, I, I'm struggling getting free from it. <laughs> okay, so any, so if, if a man's feeling shamed and blamed at the same time, it's pretty much the most opposite of his feeling of aliveness, especially coming from his partner. So first, so let me just outline that a man wants to feel like a hero. And he wants to be able to um, nourish and uh, give the wants of his woman uh, a chance at life. And so the opposite of that is being seen, is being criticized, blamed, or shamed. So I'm just letting you know that that angle is the quickest way to cut down your man. So it's great um, that you're looking to do it, uh, to do something else. Here's what I'd recommend yeah, you instead. Yeah, criticize him a lot as well. <laughs> yes. So, and it comes from a place of pain, hurt, confusion, fear, anger in you, which are all valid and important, important compass guiding points for the relationship's success. What I'd recommend you do is actually speak from that place of feeling. When you feel, so in a given instance where you might blame slash blame your, shame your partner, you're having sensations in your body. You're having a feeling. But like I said in the exercise, you go, close your eyes, and you go roving in your body, and you look for the sensations. And you'll start to find them. It might take some practice, but you'll start to feel. And, and I would love for you to report to your partner what you're feeling. So he just did something that got you upset. Okay. So then you say, husband, I'm feeling a clenched terror in my chest. I'm feeling tension in my jaw. I'm feeling a nausea in my belly. You actually report the physical sensation. First step, that alone will be a different, will garner a different response from your partner. He will become alert because you're telling him about something that's going on in your body, that's information that will... um, in his mind, he'll start connecting that information to whatever behavior he's been engaging in. And when he gets to make his own connections between when I do X, Y feels Y, without you telling him the connection, he gets to have the epiphany himself and realize, oh, maybe I could do something different. Oh, whenever I do this, she feels nausea. You're not shaming or blaming him. You're just reporting what's actually going on in your body. Maybe you could name your feelings. You could say, I feel scared, I feel insecure, I feel afraid, I feel upset, I feel angry. And you, again, like we said in class today, you don't give reasons, explanations, or rants, or justifications. You just say the feeling, which is extremely hard to do. It took me many years to practice this with my partner. You, you literally just say to your partner, I feel tension in my body. I think it's sadness. I feel um, tingles on my face. I think it's rage. And then shut up. You don't say another word. You're leaving your partner curious. If someone said that to you, the next step would naturally be, well, what's, what's going on for you? Now, that, that move is very subtle, but it's very important. When your partner or husband asks you what's going on for you, his mind is in a receptive place to want to hear the answer. When you tell him before he asks, you kind of trespassed on what he's available to hear, but when he asks for it, he's actually eliciting the information from you. So report your physical sensations, report the names of your feelings, report them in a way that is inarguable. So I'll give you a distinction. Um, I feel like you're ignoring me, okay? So the guy can argue back, no, I'm not ignoring you. I listened to you. I said this right back. I answered you when you spoke to me. He can argue with it. If you say, I feel unimportant, he can't argue with you. That's how you feel. He might go, well, what's going on? What, what, what did I do that made you feel unimportant? If you phrase what your experience is as a, as a personal subjective report without a make wrong, blame, or shame, they get to get curious and ask information about it, and they're, they're in a much more receptive state. Okay, Mark, anything you have to add? 